Let's now do what we promised, and that is welcome our good friend John Dykes all the way from the United Kingdom, because um, we've heard from Mark talking about what an important day this one just gone has gone, the weekend. We've got a huge one at Zoo Lake here in Johannesburg for free. It's the Barclays Premier League Live, and to tell us a little bit more about that and give his opinion of uh, the weekend's football that's just gone is none other than John Dykes. John, good, good evening, I should say. And by the way, I just want to remind John and also our viewers at home that we do have uh, about a five or six second delay with our communication. So, uh, John, good evening. Uh, good evening, Neil. It's great to be with you. And uh, yeah, about that delay, it normally takes a little while for me to process anything, I have to say. Belated happy birthday, Terry. I think it was very unfair of Neil to bring up that game. I still can't believe that Southampton managed to lose it, I have to say. Uh, Andre, good to be with you. Uh, and Mark, I must say, Alan Kirbishly uh, was saying some really complimentary things about you this past weekend. But uh, I'll carry charging on because you've mentioned the Barclays Premier League Live. And it gives me an opportunity to, to be down there in Johannesburg this weekend. In a sense, I'm hearing things about a 100-meter screen on which they'll be broadcasting the matches. And we'll be showing five live games this coming weekend. 100 metres is a bit scary, to be honest. I'll make sure I get nothing stuck in my teeth before I go on air with that one. And uh, HD can be very, very cruel, as we all know, Neil, I think. But, uh, no, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity, I think, to thank the fans uh, down there in South Africa. I understand there are something like 10 million fans uh, of a Barclays Premier League club, one or another, down there in South Africa. Won't get that many into Zoo Lake, but there's going to be up to 12,000 uh, each of the two days, Saturday and Sunday, 24,000 going there. It's a day out for the whole family, as well as the five matches, three on Saturday, two on Sunday, will be broadcasting. It's an opportunity to get involved, to see the trophy. I know you've got the trophy there with you, and I think you'll agree, actually, Neil. I mean, I, I have the trophy with me most weekends, and it's still exciting. It still gives us all a bit of a buzz to have the trophy in there with us. And another thing that will be quite nice for you is that there's a lovely interactive exhibition, a chance to find out about your clubs. And also, thanks to green screen technology, to uh, get your picture taken holding the trophy bedecked as winners of the Barclays Premier League in your club's colours. So I think for Spurs, it's probably as close as you'll probably come anytime <laughs> soon, it must be said, mate. But uh, anyway, uh, as far as the rest of it is concerned, uh, a chance to practice your skills. There'll be coaching going on down there with uh, Premier League coaches and legends there. I know Mark's going to be involved with Lucas Radebi as well. Uh, a couple of overseas legends coming in and big names too. Uh, Robbie Fowler, goal scorer supreme, is going to be there. Also Marcel Desailly. So it's a fantastic opportunity to thank the fans of South Africa, to watch some football to really experience everything there is about the Barclays Premier League, the most supported league in the world, and it promises to be very special. The beauty as well, mate, is that we'll be focusing on all the teams left in the title race, and that should be special. John, thank you very much. Uh, don't go away, because I've got one question, despite the delay, that I do want to ask you, and it has to do with television. But, uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to being down there at Zoo Lake. You've mentioned all those names, so I want to call out the South Africans from uh, not only Johannesburg, but further afield. If you want to come through from Pretoria or take the drive through from wherever you are, it's going to be a wonderful Saturday and Sunday. It's for free, and John is spot on. We've got the trophy right here. There's a buzz in studio. We've got a studio audience um, who are loving the fact that they've come through to see the Barclays Premier League trophy, and tonight they've had all their photographs taken with it. So here's the question we want to ask you, John, because we've seen this weekend of mistaken identity. Now, of course, from an English perspective, Frank Lampard's disallowed goal in the World Cup here in South Africa, mm. FIFA 2010, was well documented. It led to goal line technology. Do you think that what we've seen on the weekend with the wrong player getting sent off that we might see, we just might see further advancements in the use of television technology to make sure that these mistakes don't happen. It's interesting, isn't it, Neil? Because obviously it focuses attention on that once more. I don't necessarily know if that is going to be the answer. I'm afraid to say the answer might just need to be that the officials don't make mistakes like that. It was a truly bizarre uh, series of circumstances. You'll have watched that we sought the counsel, as we always do, of Dermot Gallagher, the former uh, Premier League referee. And quite frankly, he said there were plenty of opportunities, really, for the assistants to, 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 to change their mind or change uh, Andre Mariner's mind during the course of what happened there. I think there's been a lot that's, that's gone on about this decision that's actually a bit of a smokescreen, if you will. This business about was it going in or not, 
Oxley Chamberlain thought the ball was going in when he went to save it, for example. So, so uh, you know, Dermot said straight away, that's going to be a red card. So we knew that was the case. It, it's bizarre to think. And by the way, he couldn't take the word, could he, the referee of the players? Because, you know, if, 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 if players were to have their say with the referee, we could lead to all sorts of problems there. But this business is about should they have checked on the technology and given him the answer. The problem with that is the obvious answer is yes. To avoid the embarrassment, someone sort of said, you've got it absolutely wrong. But I think everybody who watched that, whether you were watching it in real time, whether you were there or like us watching it from a TV studio, we all knew what had happened. I just can't believe that one of the officials wasn't able to fix that problem. I don't think that necessarily it calls for video technology because the problem with video technology is you need to know exactly when you use it, which instances, whether it's just in the box. It's very hard to draw the line in terms of when it's used. I think you probably would love to see it in certain circumstances, but the other problem is a sort of administrative one. When are football's authorities going to say, yeah, FIFA, say, right, okay, we're allowing this one to come in. I just happen to think it was a bizarre set of circumstances and one that hopefully they'll go away and learn from and not allow to happen again. Also, by the way, it happened at a, at a stage in the game, and this is going to pain the Arsenal fan in your studio there, when Arsenal were being absolutely blown away. It didn't change anything about the game, did it? I spoke to a member of the uh, Chelsea coaching staff uh, the other night, and I said, well, well done, great performance, amazing result. And he, who shall remain nameless, turned around and said, you know what, the amazing thing about that was just how terrible Arsenal were on the day. We could not believe how they played and how badly they started that game. Mm. John, thank you very much. We, we appreciate your time. Uh, sorry about the delay, but we've got the gist of it and your message of Barclays Premier League. Do us one favour. I'm going to be out at uh, Zoo Lake on the weekend, on Saturday and Sunday, so I'm very privileged to be working with all those gentlemen that you've mentioned. But send us one of those little Carol Burnett messages. Mm -hmm. Just tickle your ear on a Saturday and Sunday so we know you're sending us all the best from your Barclays Premier League studio <laughs> in Saturday <laughs> and Sunday. But thanks for joining us. I'm going to carry on with my panel. Have a lovely evening.